Okay, so you know how you talk with some feminists about rape and they just steadfastly deny that women will falsely accuse anyone of rape? And then you mention the Duke Lacrosse case to them and they pretend to have no idea what you're talking about even though it was covered ad nauseum in national news? Oh, yeah. I was just, I remember this. I remember this, all the stuff. And, you know, and, you know, basically being in Maryland, I, it was another punchline because, you know, Maryland well, Duke rivalry and such. Well, I'm in North Carolina. This is basically in my backyard. Like oh, three yeah. hours away from me is Duke University. Oh, that, that must have been fun. <laughs> How much of those, like, I mean, even if it was like real, not, I mean, they, I honestly think that's the press's job now is kind of taking sensational stories and building them up because no one wants to hear about what their government's actually doing. We need to find out these other stories that mean absolutely, that might be horrible and everything else, but at the end of the day, mean absolutely nothing to your rights, liberty, and everything else, because keep the people distracted and against each other, and, you know, while they keep running with the bank with the politicians and the judges or what have you. Yeah. You know. So anyway, yeah. quick recap. Uh, in 2006, Crystal Gale Magnum, who was black, falsely accused three white members of the Duke Blue Devils men's lacrosse team of raping her at a party held at the house of the two team captains, and of course... <clears throat> And, of course, the whole nation's hearts bled for her and her horrible experience in rape culture and blah, blah, blah. Oh, that the is just a social team. justice warrior's, like, oh, best yeah. possible dream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. This was like, they were all over it. The lacrosse team was suspended. The coach was forced to resign. The remainder of the lacrosse season was canceled. To this day, these three students and the coach have had to deal with all sorts of negative fallout from this case, even though we know for a fact that Magnum lied about the whole thing. You know, I'm just going to say this right said. I'm going to say this right now, and I've said this for years. If you lie about being raped, you're just as evil and horrible and diabolical and vile as any person who would rape somebody. And Amen. I sometimes have this thought that if you falsely accuse someone of a crime and it can be proved in court that you knew it was a lie when you said it, then you should face the sentence that the other person would have gotten for, you know, not just for losing the case, but I mean for, you know, positive like this where we have actual positive evidence that it was a lie and she knew it then you would serve out the sentence that the, the accused would if they had been convicted. And Absolutely. Have, I honestly, I honestly, I had a caveat to that and all the financial like stress, they have to pay for all the stuff too, like the lawyers and everything else. So not just financial, I mean, who, not even just financial. How about social? How about the fact that these three players are pretty much forever going to be known as rapists, even though they were perfectly acquitted and the evidence shows that, that, the woman lied. Uh, I yeah. just, you know, the problem is just... this is why I said lying about it is just as bad as actually raping somebody because you can potentially and more likely than not ruin somebody's life, even if it turns out that it wasn't even true. Yeah, I when I first heard about like the evidence and I was like fully on the side of uh, the victim. I was like, you know, I want them to be hung by the heart, the, you know. You know, just completely destroyed, you know, that sort of thing. And then when evidence kept coming out and more and more, I was like, how could I have been so foolish? How could I have been, you know, it just feels like how, I mean, how can a person do that to another person willingly? Yeah. I, I mean, to lie about this. And that's why, you know, some people, you know, are this terror. I mean, there's a lot of people my age, even younger, like, you know what, did I even like, you know, go out with any girls like that, especially, you know, girl, uh, women who are like, you know, uh, hey, like, hey, why don't you, like, you know, say, oh, I don't want this and everything else and be like, um, well, I, okay, I'll stop. And it's like, hey, why'd you stop? Well, you told me to stop. I'm not going to go and uh, <laughs> do anything. It's like, you know, if they yeah. continue on. I mean, and I, there was actually a story, I remember this, of a football player, a college football player. It was, it was not this one or with the Florida. It was another guy um, who had – Who's, who went to jail and what have you and had to lost his career and everything. I think he's finally got a, a team, a, a practice squad somewhere. He finally got his, uh, good to college. I mean, uh, got his dream together because they actually set up a sting 
They said the woman actually lied and said, you know, she did it because she was, um, they needed the money. She got like a one, two million dollar lawsuit or what have you. And I'm like, mm, two million dollars. She spent all the money. She just had to, um, um, go on, uh, like, uh, um, cause she had to went to a bus to t- go to the lawyers and what have you. I'm just like, how could you do this? How could you ruin a person's life for financial gain? I just, Oh, there are so many stories out there just like this and worse. Well, sometimes oh, it's man. even worse than that. Sometimes it's not even for financial gain as much as it's because, like, I could think of another example I saw a long time ago where it was a, another college athlete. Uh, this He was a, a African-American basketball player, um, and he had consensual sex with a white girl. And it turned out that her father was a big racist, and... She didn't want daddy to find out that his little daughter was having sex with a black person. So she lied and said that he raped her. And, of course, this was in, like, you know, way down south, like Missouri. You know, in the middle of, like, Nowheresville. And the poor kid didn't have a chance. Yeah. They finally got him out when they when they realized that she lied, but even still, his life and career were pretty much ruined. Oh, um, by the oh, way, yeah. it was, uh, Brian Banks, that was the person who was, again, a stunning hidden camera of... Uh, no, here's the crazy thing. It was a Facebook friend request from his apu- uh, of accuser. She wanted to become <laughs> his Facebook friend. Oh, jeez. Are you... I just... Oh, oh, wow. I don't even... Just... That's Facebook bringing people together. <laughs> oh God! Oh gosh! You know, it's just—I mean, I think he's playing for the Atlanta Falcons and a defensive player. And just again, she was ordered, yeah, uh, two point six million dollars. And yes, I just—it just how? I mean, <laughs> just how could you do this to a person? Well, in the Duke Lacrosse case, leading the charge was Durham County Prosecutor Mike Nafong, and as a result of his actions in prosecuting this case, was disbarred for dishonesty, fraud, deceit, and misrepresentation, and that is the first time in North Carolina history that a prosecutor was was disbarred for his conduct in trial. He spent one day in jail. Magnum was not charged with anything. Of course, one day in jail for... Attempting ruining someone's life or what have you, because God forbid you can't do anything about a prosecutor. Uh, yeah. Well, at least he was disbarred, so he's not a prosecutor anymore. But now, after the whole thing has left the rather selective memory of many progressives who kind of shut up about the whole thing once it was all shown to be bogus, there's now a book out by William Cohen, which claims to be a fresh look at the Duke Lacrosse case showing that Nafong really wasn't such a bad guy after all. He's just kind of a misunderstood hero. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, some misunderstood hero tries to ruin the lives of three innocent people, you know, (laughs) by perpetuating a lie that he knew was a lie. Oh, yeah, some hero. Yeah, and by deliberately withholding the DNA evidence that proves he was lying. That's just evil right there. And he only spent how many days in prison? One. One day. To be fair, that's more than most. (laughs) True. (laughs) And I think that was really a contempt of court type of thing, really. But but this book has gotten glowing reviews from the New York Times, Salon, The Economist, and The Wall Street Journal, and starred reviews from Kirkus, Publishers Weekly, and Booklist. But if you look on Amazon, it's a little bit of a different story. Uh, Amazon has eight five-star reviews, three four-star reviews, and 44 one-star reviews. Mm-hmm. So I think that's when he gets some better information on it. Yeah. yeah that's just, uh, I'm not surprised. I mean, there's so many, you know, I mean, when you do have, like, uh, uh, someone who lied for the most part and just did all this stuff about, oh, you know, he's really a good guy. No, he's not. But he had to because all these elite, rich, white students can just buy their way out of prosecution. So he had to do all this to try to get justice because they must have been guilty of something. Some justice. Mm. 
Yeah. Justice, uh, injustice uh, somewhere is injustice everywhere. But supporting this, he just uses the press stories basically from all the when everyone was all whipped up in a frenzy before it came out that the accusation was false. He never interviewed any of the involved parties or witnesses. He never even used any of the information you know that came out since then that showed she was lying. I mean, all it's just the evidence that the attorney general had ruled bogus. The attorney the attorney general actually said it was worthy of a declaration of innocence. Which, I mean, it takes a lot for them to say that. And he just uses ad hominems and character assassinations against the lacrosse players with nothing at all to back it up. Of course. There's always something. Again, it's just, um, um, you know, people who never have the evidence, even when the evidence is proven. Even when people just still have the denial factor, it doesn't matter how anything is. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, people will believe whatever they want. I mean, they will believe whatever when you know, the facts is right there in front of you and everything else. You can tell them how you can lead a horse to water, but it's something not to drink. It's, you know. Yeah. Hmm. But the pattern that comes out pretty clearly in all the reviews is it's progressive leftists that are basically trying to excuse me wrong, which is kind of the opposite. It's usually, you know, the right wing Republicans who are trying to go, yeah, you know, the prosecutors are all good, but now it's flipped around. So let's be honest here. Would they be taking this position if the crime had been anything other than rape, if the accuser hadn't been a black female, and if the accused hadn't been rich white boys? Mm. Probably not. Yeah. Of course. Probably. You know, it's it's just um you know, it's always, like I said, I always believe this, is that people would rather, you know, it's it's easy, it's a way to set things up. I mean, if everything is perverse, I mean, we, we say we're a colorblind society, but at the end of the day, we're not. We just use things to distract, I mean, like, it gets people riled up. And meanwhile, you know, when the real things are going down, that does affect not just people in this country, but around the world, you know, the press and the media, the media in general are silent. You know, that's the reason why a lot of people don't, I don't even trust anything what they say because at the end of the day, they are only there for one thing and one thing only, you know, just to line their own pockets and, and the truth be damned. Actually, yeah. you know what? I take that back. There are two cases where I think they probably would have changed their mind. If it was Casey Anthony or OJ Simpson. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Because everybody oh, still thinks wow. both of them are guilty. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. The whole world knows they're guilty, and, you know. But hey, <clears throat> it's just, again, it's a way to distract the people when the bigger stuff is happening. I mean, they didn't yeah. care for the Wanda Jump genocide when uh, OJ was driving down his, uh, his uh, 44 uh, whatever car. In that low driving. speed car chase. Yeah. It was all over the news. Yeah, I know. It's just, I remember it's that. Just, again, I w it was all over the news. I saw everything else, and it was barely a blip in the radar. Maybe I remember things wrong, but there was no talk about the, the, the genocide yeah. when people were dying I yeah, know. for whatever stuff. And it's just like, oh, this, oh, we, we covered it. It probably at best was a blip of the damn thing. And meanwhile, this low-speed car chase of a former football player, a movie star, who killed uh, his wife, and it was a tragedy. Well, right he was acquitted, the... so you know you can't yeah. really say he killed it. We don't know. Yeah, or what have you, kill and everything else. It's just I, like I said, at the end of the day, it feels like a media doesn't really concern things about the whole world or things that are part of a real changing type stuff that you know that could actually affect. You know, that's this is the reason why Alex Jones and Emperor Wars are so popular because. Because when you have the media, again, acting like this, well, you know, what other choices out there? Well, I mean, it's kind of like the Amanda Knox thing. You know, the story that the media was spinning is, you know, Amanda Knox was this innocent woman being railroaded. And lots of people are, you know, thinking they're, oh, so clever and thinking that, oh, you see, now I'm second guessing that. And I'm thinking she's probably guilty, except if you actually look at the evidence yeah, the media got it right that time. She's just so incredibly obviously innocent. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Oh, by the way, my 
My only question is, oh. where the hell is Nancy Grace to make crap up? Yeah. <laughs> the less we hear from her, the better. Yeah. 